Today we're making vintage Halloween. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. The first project is our cabinet of curiosities. Alright, so I'm going to start off with this little tray or a cabinet that I found at Goodwill. I have a variety of stickers, so what you're going to see is just some options you could use. So I've got some stickers and these are the ones that are kind of 3D. And they look kind of old. And I've got some wood butterflies. I've got a variety of stickers and stamps from Timu. Depending on what kind of theme you're going for. I've got a little lighted lantern from Dollar Tree. Got a frame, some little pumpkins, a raven, a squirrel, a variety of these mesh ribbons from Dollar Tree, and these are from Timu. We're gonna take a, take a look at these. Very cute. These just came in. I just got them. This is not a sponsored video, but I have found I'm getting some very unique craft pieces from Timu, so that's why I share those with you. And the prices are good, but you know, you can decide on your own where you want to spend your money. Very cute. These are so nice. I knew I had to have them. When I saw it, I just knew I had to have them for our vintage Halloween. Okay? Then you can use a variety of little plastic insects. Got some little, these are actually cupcake toppers. Charms from a bracelet. Little trees, little branches. Some things from Dollar Tree, stars and bones. They're just foam. These little picks from Dollar Tree. A candy corn looking tree from Dollar Tree. And then from Dollar Tree Plus, I have two boxes of these little pieces and we're gonna be using a couple from each box. They're very nice and definitely worth the $5 because you get at least five, sometimes six in a box. So it's definitely worth your money. And they're bigger than the little fairy figurines that you can find in the garden section. Okay, so here is our box and we're gonna try to find things that will fit in the spaces. For now, I'm gonna turn the box sideways and we're gonna just kind of play around with placement. Don't become overwhelmed. Just, you know, see what you like and see what fits in the different little spots. And we'll give each of the little things that we like a little home. Tree is too big to go in the larger place and the bigger slots there, but these trees can be cut down. They're just on a wire, a twisted wire. So you can cut this down. I'm gonna cut the tip off of the tree and I'll be trimming up the bottom too. You can see here, I'm gonna work on the bottom a little bit. Sometimes I get nervous about cutting in the pieces, but then I just have to remind myself, you know, I paid a dollar twenty-five for it. If I mess it up, I have another one, not a big deal. Okay, now I've got it where it will fit. And it'll just fluff right out like it, you know, it did before. If you just kind of play around with the fibers, be sure you dump your fibers out of there. This looks like spider web. So for this project, I'm going to use it for that. I've just doubled it over. And yeah, that's going to fit in there. I like that as a background. You can use construction paper or you can use any kind of crafting paper or wallpaper in the back if you want to do that. But because of the depth and because I want to have some dimension in here, you're not really going to see what's in the far back. If you get up close and look, you can, but um, some of these you, you're not really going to be able to see. But I'm still going to show them to you so you have an idea of what you can use. Think of all those bits and pieces you have from Halloween crafting gone by that are just maybe in your bowl of scraps or you didn't know what to do with the pieces, but for some reason you can't part with them. This is a great opportunity to use all those little extra pieces. I did not have to buy not one single thing new for this project. I had all of these. Um, I bought these thinking I was going to make a little village with them, but I thought they fit perfectly in this box, so I'm just going to use them in the box. All right, so I'm going to, I want to get that white tone down a little bit. So, you know, for my choice, I'm just going to use some antiquing wax over all of the whites that I might be using in here. I am going to place this forward and hold it in place until the glue is set. This one will go, it'll extend slightly outside of the box, but for the most part it fits in there. And I've just added some glue to hold that in place too. See that? I'm taking this little sculpture of the hear no, speak no, see no, you know, and I'm going to put him in here 
he is a little too small for the big spots and he's a little definitely too big for the smaller places so what i'm going to do is just cut it down this is a thin wood like a veneer or you know something really thin and i'm just going to use my clippers to snap the sides and then my full nose pliers to rock back and forth and cut off the inner part and i'm going to go do this in little sections in three different sections all the way to the back of the box so now we have one long narrow spot I don't want splinters so I'm gonna take my little emery board and just sand it down on both sides makes it look nice too and you won't be able to see where we cut the divider out if that's a concern just grab some antiquing wax and go over the lighter spots now I want him to go here but I want it to look more like um, sort of like a topiary I guess so I'm gonna have to give it some more height by standing it up this is just a scrap piece that I have you can use blocks from Dollar Tree or or whatever you have that you can stack this on top of and just put it right on top now an idea if you don't have one of these boxes if you look at those toys uh, melissa and doug toys a lot of times they have divisions in their boxes puzzle boxes and things like that so consider picking something that up like that at the craft store you won't have as many slots in it but you can make it work for sure for this little lighted feature, I am going to use Velcro dots. I use two in the back to begin with, and then I do add two to the front uh, later on, which you do not see. To get them in the right spots, I'm gonna add the soft side down to the lantern, and then the prickly side is going to be what's touching the box. So when I put it in here, I put them together so they line up, and I'm gonna just squish them down and hold them in place until, it's it, until I feel like it's had enough time to kind of grab. Then you can just take it out, turn it on, turn it off. Yay, happy dance, happy dance. Love it when things come together. Okay, so we can turn this back off, save our battery. Okay, now we're gonna keep going. And I'm and again doing the same thing. If it's something that I know I'm gonna leave in that spot, I'll leave it there. If not, then I'll just kind of move it around till I get it like I like it. Now on this one, I am also going to be using a uh, mahogany, I think it's the mahogany, no, it's the walnut, the walnut furniture repair marker. And I'm gonna use that to just kind of trace out and give it a little more detail so it doesn't disappear when we get it in the box. You can put that on and then quickly, 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 you can kind of blend it out a little bit with your baby wipe. Okay, so this is a bracelet. I have two of these. I bought one to craft, one to wear. I'm going to bend this out. It's sort of a, it's metal, but it's kind of soft and flexible. So I'm just going to bend it out straight and I'll show you what to do with that in a moment. We're going to skip around a little bit, so bear with me. Now this one also, I've got it toward the front of the box. This is going to make some shadows behind it. Plus it's going to bring it close enough to the front that the light will hit it and you can actually see what's in there instead of losing it in the back. If you choose to use something like these puppy stickers, you can put them in and I just put mine all the way against the back wall. Now the benefit of these as opposed to something that is flat with no color is that there's enough dimension in it for the light to reflect off of it. So, you know. Okay, so now I've got some of these that look like books. I found these recently. I really like them. I'm going to put these in here to make it look like maybe there's some books on the shelf. And here's another one. You can trim them down if you want to trim them down, but I'm just going to use the two books here. I like that. You can also use hot glue if you want to make sure that everything stays in place once you get it exactly where you want to keep it. I'm going to add a little spider to the top just to kind of embellishment. There's this like sands through the hourglass. Do y'all know what that's from? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's been around a long time. Okay, so I'm just going to add my little my little um sticker in there. Then I'm going to color my other white pieces, like I said before let it dry i'm gonna grab my these are just some jewelry pliers but i pick up any kind of tool i find that i think i can use crafting and i repurpose it for something else so i'm gonna bend the bottom so it almost has like a leg or a little stand to hold it i prop the box up for this because i don't want the glue to drip to the back i want this to sit right down in the glue and i have it bent so that it's a tight squeeze and it'll hold itself in place for this little broom piece, I'm just going to take the colored stick off. You can paint yours if you would like. 
and I'm gonna go over this with a little antiquing wax. This is just a dowel rod that I cut down. I want it to look more like a natural stick. A little hot glue and stick it right back in there. Rather than having the cartoony colors here, I'm going to wrap this with a little bit of burlap. And then I will also be coloring the black part of this later. I'm just going to uh, embellish it somewhat. So stay tuned so you can see for sure what we do. Then you can just glue and trim that off. Okay, so I wasn't certain about where I wanted the hourglass. So now that I know, I'm gonna add my glue and then I'm gonna put it in there. You can add moss if you want to, to the bottom of these, if you would like to do that. But y'all, I'm planning on doing another one of these in more of a sort of a gothic, dark academia, mm, dark cottage core look. So be sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss that because, ugh. And by the way, I am going to be changing my room up from the cottage, like a light cottage core. It's real neutral in here. I'm gonna be changing it to dark cottage core. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know and I will try to share some of that with y'all. Okay, so this is just a little bit of, a, of that sand colored paint and I'm just kind of brushing it over a little bit. I love to just keep blending out and adding colors and layers like it's old, you know? like it's old and it's been loved before and we're loving it again so i'm gonna take that spider web track there and add a bunch of spiders to it i have this little pot and it came in a bag i think this was from saint patrick's day at dollar tree but i'm gonna take this pot and i'm gonna color this with chalk paint because it's a real shiny color and i want it to look like it's old so we'll start off with um the black paint and let that dry thoroughly. While that's drying, I'm going to make a bunch of balloons for one of our little ghosts. Now, to make it easier to stick to the back of the ghost, I'm going to use a pipe cleaner to wind these together. And then that is easier to stick down. It kind of grabs the glue and will hold it in place on the back. He is going to be a little bit forward in the box. There's going to be spaces behind him. But the dimension, I love. Okay, so he's glued in place. He's not going anywhere. You can also add a little glue to the back of his little balloon there. I'm going to add in some rub-ons in case this is something that you might have and that you might like to use. These are from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to burnish it down. It's a window. It's really nice. And then I'm going to take another one. And this is like a rose with something on it from the same sheet. I'm going to put it down. And I know we have talked before on this channel about happy accidents. Well, we have a happy accident. Or I'm not going to blame y'all for it. I have a happy accident. Um, you can see here that it's pulled off. I knew that it was going to happen when it happened. But I'm going to show you how to make that look like you did it on purpose. So, I'm going to take some rich espresso and I'm going to go over this pot. And I'm going to make it look like maybe it was a bronze or brass pot that is just burnt because it's been on the spit forever, you know? I'm gonna color it and I'm just gonna, I'm only gonna go over the one side that's gonna be exposed, go under the lip, over the lip and dots, pounce it all over until you are comfortable with the amount of coverage that you get and be sure that you do the handle of that as well. Set it aside and let that dry. Then I'm gonna move on to another section. Y'all, when my mind starts going, Oh my goodness, I hope y'all can follow me. Just, just jump around with me for a little bit, okay? Let's just pretend like we're all in Brandy's head right now, okay? Beware though, <laughs> be very aware. Gets nuts in there sometimes. Okay, a little bit of hot glue on the top, a little bit of hot glue on the bottom. I'm just explaining what I'm doing since I didn't think it pertinent to show you what I was doing. And then I'm gonna go over and just kind of tap on that same, whatever's left in the brush. I'm gonna tap that on. To the picture, I'm also going to put it on the lantern. Then I'm going to put it on the wood pieces I have in there. I'm also going to put a little bit on my tree trunk, you know, just wherever. Okay, so now that the pot is dry, I'm going to take some of this meshy ribbon. I'm going to kind of ball it up, put it in the pot. And then I have these two bones. I've had these forever. I did them last year. And I probably thrifted them because I find little odds and end pieces of stuff that are not in bags when I go to the bins. So I just pick it up. 
but you can use those foam Dollar Tree bones if you want to and you can antique those a little bit with the antiquing wax. I'm going to add some hot glue and that is some smoking hot glue. Put that pot in there with the pretty side face and board. Ooh, I love it. She looks like she's over the pot. Then I'm going to take another little picture that I like and this one has a skeleton on it. I'm going to add him in here. These pictures came from a package that I think I ordered from Amazon. If I can, if I can find that link, I'll grab it and I'll put it in the description box for you because, uh, yeah, I love them. It's several different prints and I think four different sizes. So, okay. So for more dimension and support, I'm going to take another block here and I'm going to paint it black. I'm going to put this little black ghost, and this is just top of a coffee stirrer. I mean, I'm telling you, you're just going to go nuts here. You just do whatever. I'm going to put it down in the box with that broken stencil, and then I also put a sticker in there beside it. And then to cover up that shiny, I'm just going to cover it with the black paint that's left in the brush. I'm going to go back over and add a little more black paint here and there just to make sure that everything is blended and everything looks consistent throughout the project. Now, I love this raven. Absolutely love it. And y'all know I love my ravens. Put your spectacles on. And then I'm going to trim off all of this white. I want to make a picture with this and I don't want that white in the background. It needs to be trimmed up a little bit more. Just don't want to cut my words off. And then it's going to fit here. I'm going to take my paint. I'm just using what's in that brush. I'm just going to push it down and just kind of make it look messy and distressed and just ew. Give it a chance to dry. Then you're going to peel the backing off your sticker and just apply it somewhat toward the center. Now, the fact that we painted it black on the outside will give you a little bit of freedom if you can't get it lined up exactly because you're not really going to notice. Now again, same thing, just to take a little shine out, I'm going to add a little bit of that black paint that's from the brush in there. I'm going to add some hot glue and put that right down in there. Hi, Mr. Ghost. Bye, Mr. Ghost. All right, so I'm going to add my raven up here. Look at that little splinter poking out, y'all. I do get it. I'm going to glue it down in there with that raven picture. I'm going to take some of these ornaments from Dollar Tree. These, of course, like I said, everything pretty much is from last year. I'm going to add some glue here, and I'm just going to make like a little, again, a little stacked thing. I'm going to take this frame that once was yellow, and we painted it with black. And I am going to, and I actually just spray painted it. I'm going to take that same espresso color and pounce it all over this frame to bring out the beautiful details and inside that lip too. And then I'm gonna use some double stick tape and stick it on the back of my picture. Then I am going to go inside of the backing and kind of blur that out with a little bit of that same espresso color, just so it blends in a little bit better. Put the backing back on and then of course tear this off so it will lay flat. It's just a little kickstand on there. And you can also take that off with a screwdriver if you want. I'm going to take that same espresso and go over the lighter spots. It's really going to make that pop out. Then I'm going to add this frame right here. And it's on the outside. It doesn't go all the way on the inside. I'm totally fine with that. I like it. I like all of the texture and dimension. And there's so much to look at. You want the idea to be that every little box is its own little world and it just makes sense. You know, it just has something interesting in every spot, in every little room in this house, if you will. These are some remaining beads that I had left over from the sign that we did, the light up sign that we did. And then I'm going to take one of these plastic pumpkins and squish in the back so he'll be flat and we can glue him right inside of there. Add your glue and pop him right in there. I'm going to take the charms off of that bracelet and then I'm going to use them as ornaments on the tree. 
I use three of them as ornaments. Then I'm going to take the boo and put him right over here on the ghost. Do you see how we're mixing everything up here? We're mixing up our elements. We've got some resin, some paper, some metals. I'm going to take the tip of that tree and it's going to be over here by our picture. I'm going to add some of these little bronze looking butterflies that I found in my stash. And you can see the end of the black broom. I added some bronze to that and it really looks like a different broom now. It's going to be just on the outside of the box, just kind of freestanding. I'm going to put a little glue on this little ghosty and put a butterfly on his hand. See, there's so much going on in here. This is so much fun. I love this and I really hope that you try something like this because, oh my goodness, I had a blast. So I put the light bulb over there by the little skull topiary. I'm going to take that wooden butterfly off because to me it just, it didn't, it wasn't meshing. It didn't feel right. So I just removed it, but you can do whatever you like. I really wanted that metal in there. Put the Halloween sign right on the top. And I'm going to continue to add all over the place. Here's one of those cute ornaments. The little child has the pumpkin over its face. Here's a little witch girl. Put her up there by the witch stuff. And then this little witchy is going to go down here. Okay, I put some little stones from Dollar Tree in here. It's just a little rock. And I'm going to add some brown paint just on the inside of this bottle for the witch. And I'm going to add hot glue to this cork because I don't want that to leak out. I'm going to add another little butterfly here on the tombstone. It's just going to cover up that spider. I'll add the bottles in here and there where they make sense. And again, I'm not pushing everything to the back. Here's an idea. For the wool of that, I cut up a pom-pom and I'm going to stick that all on the inside. You won't see it that much, but like I said, if you're curious, and this is our cabinet of curiosities, and you get up close and look, you can see all those little details. So I'm going to just glue this one right in this spot. Look at everything we have going on in here so far. How fun! How fun! Okay, so here's another one of those pumpkins. I'm going to squish it in in the back. I've had a bag of these pumpkins forever, and I think I've finally used them all. Maybe have one or two left, but they're so vintage looking to me and so cute. They fit nicely into these projects. Okay, I'm going to add him in there. And then look at this. This came off of a banner. But I've got so much mixed media in here. I love it. Then you see the little Halloween, the little girl over there. She's on a piece of foam board, and it just fits right inside out of the same pack. I'm going to go over it with that with that espresso, and then I'm going to paint that frame out with a little bit of that black chalk paint. I'm going to paint it out, and then I'm going to smear it with my finger a little bit to make it look old. And I'm decided to go in here and do the same thing. I'm going to take that white out by just covering it up with some black and a thin brush. Simple enough. All of this just helps give it a more of an aged look. Okay? Then whatever is left, I'm going to go back over. I'm just taking a broad look at everything that's going on in here. And I'm going to go over the stickers, the puppy stickers, everything with the same espresso. I'll add a spider down here. And of course, we want to give him some highlights. So check out how he looks with that espresso on him. Nice. You could also use bronze. Now we have to have lights in this box, do we not? And rather than putting string lights in, I thought, how about little individual flickering candles? Yes. So you can cover up the flame of the candle here, the little plastic top, and spray paint it black. Uh, it would probably be better because I use chalk paint and it does chip off, but you know, you can always go back in and touch up. Let the candles set aside and dry. Then I'm gonna go over with some of this black this is like you use in gift bags or whatever. And I'm going to use it to just fill out some of those little hollows. Just again for a little more interest. I'm going to add a bat. This is just one of those wall bats. It's just like a little plasticky piece. I'm going to elevate it on a black block. 
glue it down above the ghost and then I'm gonna tone it down a little bit with the black chalk paint this is how this little beauty is going to look before we put lights in it of course here are our lights and I'm just gonna add them here and there I thought how about putting one down in the pot where the witch is cooking and that might give it a little extra something a little extra spoof so I put it in the top and put the bones back in so for the first project this is our overlook I'm extremely pleased with the way this came out and I hope that you are inspired from this I hope that you look at this and you you take the inspiration from it and that you make something like this of your own now I'm calling it a cabinet of curiosities even though there are no doors or whatever but you know you get the idea you could certainly use the little things that have doors and stuff like that on them y'all don't leave yet we've got three more projects What are you going to put in your box? Are you going to do fun? Or are you going to do scary? Might even do like a, a witch's cabinet. Maybe you've got some vintage pieces of your own. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. It is free to subscribe. And I'll see you in the comments where we have a lot of fun. The next one is Ye Old Spellbook. So this is a piece that I got from Goodwill. It's a little bit sad, so we're gonna give it a makeover. I'm gonna use a glue stick. You're gonna use a piece of leather, and this one came from Timu, but you can definitely get yours from Dollar Tree. We're gonna choose pictures here. Again, this is from the same pack. It's just repeats of the same ones, pretty much in different sizes. Love these. I think we're gonna use, hmm. Maybe we'll use, yeah, we're gonna use that one. I'm gonna cut it out. And then I'm also going to cut it down where the, um, there's no white trim at all on it. So I need to see how much of this we're gonna use. What you're looking at here on the bottom is a like a waxed paper backing because this is a self stick, which makes it very convenient because you won't have to see the hot glue through your leather. You know what I mean. You know what I mean if you've had to glue leather onto anything. You'll get those little bumps and tracks underneath it, which is okay for a spooky book, uh, I reckon. Now we're going to measure out how much we need to cover it. When I did this, I don't know what in the world I was thinking, but I ended up covering the top and both sides rather than leaving one side open to show the pages of the book. But no worries. Caught it and I fixed it. Okay? So I've trimmed it down. I'm going to sit it down on the sticky side, press it down, and then I'm going to put a little bit of tension as I roll it over so that it clings tightly to the book stack or the box, whatever you want to call it. It's actually a box that looks like three books. And I'll fold it all around and then I'm going to push it down with my hands and then you can burnish it with a wooden ruler if you don't have any type of a squeegee. You can really get a good grip on this though and um, make it nice and smooth and flat. Okay, so I'm going to go around and make sure I trim off anything that is extra on here because we don't need that. And you can see I covered up two sides, so yeah, I'll fix it. Don't worry. Then I'm going to take an awl and this just comes with like a it came with a basket making toolkit. I have no idea what you would do with the basket, but it works really good as a leather tool in this in this predicament. Now I can see where the ridges are for the books, individual books. So I'm just gonna push in there and kind of dig that little hole or that trench back out, dig that little track back out. And this is when I went, um, Okay, dummy, that's not going to work. You can't see the pages. This is not a box. It's a book stack. So I just grabbed my sander and go back in, peel that off, cut it, made sure it was trimmed up nicely, and then I just took the wording off with a sander. And knock your dust off, get it nice and clean. Simple enough. You know, I, I make mistakes too, y'all. Don't get discouraged when you do stuff like that. It's, you can fix it so easy. It's just crafting, right? 
It's just crafting. Now I'm going to use that same awl, and you can use a screwdriver for this if you want to, but I'm going to make scratches going side to side like you would have for paper. You can see all the little different lines. So I'm going to do this on both sides and on the side where you would see the pages of the books on the other side. This is important when you are adding paints to it or coloring or waxes to it because it kind of shows highlights and it shows the low places which gives dimension and that's what you want for realistic, you know, more realistic looking um, projects. So I'm going to do a little heavier towards what the binding would be which is where the leather is because I want it to, you know, see the dimension it gives there. I just like that. I just really, really like that. You can see it kind of fades or ombres out both sides. Yes. And then we're going to do that on here too. I'll use a, yeah, see, I'm, that's where I told you we're going to cut that off. I'm going to cut that off and put it aside. I'm going to grab some of that black paint and I'm going to like wipe almost all of it off. It's going to seem silly, but look how much is still left in the brush. See that? That's why we do it that way. I don't want to have too much in there. And this way, when I put it on, the part where I push the most, which is the corners, is going to be darker and it's going to fade out slightly toward the inside and the outside. And I like the look because it makes it look like it is aged. And that's the idea here. These are supposed to be vintage, aged, old fashioned crafts. Uh, my representation of it anyway, my idea of it. I'm going to add it to the leather here. And you know, leather has texture. So where I wipe it off, the black is gonna still cling down in the lower spots. I'm gonna go back over it and do this several times until I get the coverage that I like. I'm gonna try to keep that nice and flat so that the dark color stays in those little tracks there. You can see? You're just gonna continue to build this up as you like it and go all the way around and be sure that you're paying attention to all the sides. I'll take a very skinny pointed brush and go down the spaces in between each book. Yes, I just did air quotes as if you could see that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm going to keep going here and I'm going to go through these little tracks like I said. You can go through and use your little wipe and make sure that if you have any that came off that you just kind of wipe that out. You can use a damp cloth if you don't have a baby wipe. I just feel like this is so much easier for cleanup and I'm not ruining any cloths this way. I can just toss it when I'm done. What is left on there, I'm going to put on the top and then I'm gonna dry it. And once it is dry, we're gonna apply our glue stick. Yes, we are because the glue stick is what we're gonna use to attach down our little picture. And be sure you get all your little bubbles and stuff out. These I found at Dollar Tree too, and they're really nice pieces. They look old to me, and I think this is gonna give us a bit more of that vintage look. So because I didn't put these on first, I still want it to look like it is behind it. So I can achieve that look, I think, if I just cut the little triangles out from the inside, and I'll just put them back down on the plastic because we're gonna use those later in another part of this book. So save those. We're gonna stretch our dollar here. I'm just going to lay these down, each of these corners down where I think is a good placement for them before I glue them down. Now what you're seeing is me just kind of trimming to make sure that I have a nice, nice crisp corner. And I think, yeah, I, I do like the way that this looks. So we're going to, we're going to go with this and I'll have one for each corner, of course. At the bottom, it says Lucky Halloween. A Halloween spell, lucky Halloween. Okay, so then I'm just gonna add a little hot glue in the corner for each one of these pieces to hold them in place. Then we're gonna work on the sides. If you choose, you can use rub-ons, you can use, you can freehand, you can do what you want here. I'm not gonna put labels on these books at all. I am just going to embellish these with some more of those beautiful pieces. I don't know why everybody assumes so many people assume that witches are i don't know that maybe dark is a bad thing it's dark is not a bad thing you know it's all about how you use your interpretation of things i think 
Um, and I do not think that all witches are bad witches. No, I certainly do not. So this is just, I don't know, paying a little respect, I guess, for the, for the people who have done good things in the past and then were accused of really bad things. It was a sad part of our history, folks, a very, very sad part of our history. Okay, now I've got all those on there. You can see how I use the corners. Didn't waste, we used the corners on there. And I'm just gonna brush over this one at, with the antiquing wax once I have got them glued down because I know that I'm happy with their placement. I'm gonna go over all of these pieces too with it. Just gonna kind of bring that shine down just a little bit and then age it. And then I'll go over the picture and the entire book with a light layer of wax. And this gives me the perfect age look that I'm going for. I hope you like this one. The next is our set of boo blocks. There's three of them. So I've got some black blocks here, but if you don't have any of these, you can use these from Dollar Tree and paint them black. Just little dice. These are the three ornaments that I chose to use for this project. I have some little wood blocks and some black chalk paint. I'm going to use some of my double stick. Well, this is not double stick. This is painter's tape. And I'm gonna roll it over and put it down on my mat here, my little silicone mat. And I'm going to press these down to hold them in place while I paint them. I always have paint all over myself. Y'all know that. Always, always. Doesn't bother me though. I just wash it off. Once everything is dry, yeah, I do leave one side that is not painted to put downward. I'm gonna push these about a quarter of an inch back from the edge of the block. So quarter inch back for each one of these. So center and quarter inch, got it? Now we can start placing these down. For two of these, we're gonna leave it just like this. Stand them up there, allow them to dry. Here's the other one with the little cutie pie on it. This is probably my favorite one. And then for the one with the cat, we're gonna turn it backwards so that it is placed further in the back. And you'll see why in a moment. Okay, so we'll put that one in the middle. All right. Now, I am going to use some of these little uh, Scrabble blocks, and but you can use anything. You can use stickers, you can paint this on, you can use puff paint, whatever you wanna use here. But I'm gonna use these because I think they look good with this. And spell out boo. And I'm trying to just sort of get them in the center. If they're not perfect, you know I don't care. All right, now this is why you want it to do that. Now when you put them together, look! Mm. Okay, the next project is going to be our tag ornament. We made a tree, so now we gotta have tags and we got to have little things to hang on it. I've got some vintage velvet ribbon. I have a little goodie from those $5 boxes. A tag, which is wood, one of these pictures. We're gonna use some tinsel or some of those uh, pipe cleaner thingies. Some more of the sandcastle paint. I'm gonna paint that on there and I am going to allow it to dry. I'm gonna grab my glue stick, put this down all over where we want to apply the picture. I did take the trim off of the picture. If anything hangs over, you can file it off or trim it, or you can bend it over the edge. I'm gonna use just a popsicle stick, very simple, to just go over the top. Just some options for y'all in case you don't have a squeegee or an old credit card. This is so easy. Now, once it is dry, I'm gonna take my antiquing wax and I'm gonna go all around the edges where it meets the tag. This is gonna make it look old. And I know for some people, um, I've had some people say, why do you bother putting the paint on there and then dirtying it all up with the, you know, antiquing it or whatever. It's because that's the look I like. And because when you layer it, like this, it just gives it more of an authentic look, in my opinion. But by all means, do whatever floats your boat. Okay. Yeah, if it brings you joy, you're doing the right thing. Now, we're going to 
just put it across the top of it, and this is just one of them now to give you an idea of my size, to, to give me an idea of where my placement's gonna be. It's gonna make it easier when I try to glue it down. I'll cut a separate piece for the bottom because we didn't have enough. And I'm gonna tap that onto the bottom. Protect your fingers, ladies and gents. Okay, then I'm gonna start at the top with the second piece. And we've already got it folded and it's gonna fit right back on like a glove. I'm tapping it carefully in. You can use your little clamps to hold everything in place while it dries because you're gonna be pulling up on that tinsel to add more glue down and working in small, in small little areas. And it's always great to have something extra to help you hold things in place. If you make a mess with glue doing this, and it's very easy to do, just use your heat tool afterwards and it's just gonna melt that glue back down. Okay, now I'm gonna go around it with some of this velvet ribbon and I'm gonna place some of these little, whatever these are, I guess they're supposed to be berries maybe from Dollar Tree that we used before. I'm gonna just, um, I'm gonna pull this one off because I don't want it there. I wanted to put my little welcome sign and I forgot. So I'm just gonna move this up, put it in this spot. It's gonna help fill in the gaps too. It's really careful to be precise with the ribbon like this if you're using hot glue. I just can't get in those really tight spaces when I have the finger protectors on. I can't do it, y'all. Okay, so I'm gonna add this to the bottom corner, which I think looks super cute. It's gonna give us some more dimension, a little more interest here. I'm gonna paint over this with some antiquing wax, and I'm also gonna go over the bottom part of the wood also. I'm gonna let that dry. I'll take that pointy brush and go right down in the spaces of the pumpkin. Then I'm gonna take the remainder of that piece of pipe cleaner and we're gonna make a hanger. I'm gonna just fold it over. I'm gonna tuck it right through the back side and pull these out right above where we have that ribbon. I'll glue these in place. And then I will add a little spider in the middle. Now. I forgot when I was doing this to add another little bead up there in the right corner, and I didn't realize it until I was editing the video. So just beware that it is going to be fixed later, but you won't see it because I noticed it kind of late. All right, so here are the three projects that we just did. I wanted to give you something that you could use on your new tree that you made, and some things that you could sit around that will coordinate and look really nice with what you already have going on if you're doing the vintage Halloween look. I think these are really adorable together. They are vintage yet playful. And they just, I just really, really like them. Y'all remember to never stop trying. Keep on trying. It's just paint. It's just glue. You know, keep trying. You're going to get it. You will get it. If it brings you joy, then you're doing the right thing for you and your home, right? That's what I encourage you to do. If you enjoy the budget-friendly DIYs that we do on this channel, if you enjoy the content that I'm putting out, I would love it for you to subscribe, to like the video so I know to make more like it, and to share it with a friend. Because if you're a true friend, you want them to have some joy in their day as well. Thank you very much for stopping by again today. Check out the rectangle below, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!